Let's see if Bitrick is still with us and will continue the game. Here we go. He plays d4. I'll go knight f6. I'll say hi on my own time, which is, of course, very dumb. Knight f3. And I'm having a bit of a problem against 1d4 recently. I don't have a fixed repertoire. I've been playing a bit of Grunfeld, been playing a bit of my old stuff like Slav, Semi Slav, bit of Queen's Gambit, Declined, Ragozin. This is a spot which I should work on. The one opening I'm very curious about is, I was going to say knight c3, bishop b4, but he plays g3, the Catalan, and I'll keep it very classical for now and play the main line with bishop e7 and short castles, which recently in the games of Kramnik and Anand, those guys have been doing that with black, and they've been doing all right. I've always thought it's a good line, but I never thought it suited me fully. He plays knight c3, which is a bit of a sideline, Point after dc4 is, I believe, knight e5. When black plays this funny move, knight to c6, accepting double pawns or triple pawns even, but it turns out that he tends to be all right. He's thinking he doesn't want to play knight e5, it seems like. Castles instead. This is a sideline. I'm not quite sure what to do here. I believe normally the plan is to play knight c6, making it tougher for white to go queen a4 because of knight takes d4. And else... I don't know what white is up to. <clears throat> e4 is a move, then I would probably go rook b8, planning to play b5. I think I've had this position, or a very similar position, in a tournament game against Mr. Sandipan a while back. I checked it then, can't remember a thing, but my conclusion was that black is fine here, and that the main try for white was the move knight to e5 instead of castles. So let's see what he comes up with. For now, I am a pawn up. He goes queen a4, when my intention was obviously to grab on d4. Any problems with that? Nah, I can't see any problems, so I'll grab it. <clears throat> of course, white has some compensation after a move like, I was going to say queen takes c4, he takes first and now goes rook to d1, which also gives some compensation. I have to think about how greedy I want to get. Could consider, let's say, queen c5 and if bishop e3, queen to b4. Why not switch to ultra greed mode? Worst thing that can happen to me. So I blunder my queen in one of those lines. Let's try to avoid that. <clears throat> not sure. Queen g4 was a pretty decent alternative, planning to go to h5, which is normally a good square for the queen in those lines. I could still change my mind and after bishop e3, play queen h5 as well, queen c4, knight g4, which actually looks quite good now that I think about it. There you go. It's not cut offs. Think like a grandmaster, analyzing the lines move by move, but more like a flipper. Oh, I can go queen h5 in this position as well. Let's do that, or let's think about it. For now, I'm quite happy with my prospects. I am two pawns up. I think Bitrick has been a little overambitious, a little overzealous here. That's a new word I learned. But the game is, of course, by no means won yet, and I'm going to have to... <coughs> keep making or start making some sensible moves. He plays bishop f4, just developing a piece, tempted to go e5, then he would play bishop e3, and then queen b4. Yeah, let's do that. Not quite sure. e5 is a problem. It stops me from going queen to h5, which I was also looking forward to doing. He plays bishop g5 instead. Very slow approach. Now I think it is time to take the... <clears throat> d5 square under control. As I said that, I saw the move knight g4, but white is knight e4, so it doesn't look so good yet. Of course, white could now take on f6, but I will probably just recapture with a g pawn so that knight e4 is not a double attack. Not that concerned about the weakening of my king yet. Knight e4 has been played. <laughs> Queen b4 now runs into knight takes f6, so I'll go to b5. I'm starting to grow a little bit more concerned about having weak my king, frankly, but it still doesn't look too bad. Queen c2, a bit of a choice here. Bishop f5 would be a mistake after knight takes f6 check. Ah, it's a pity I can't draw arrows in here. Would be more instructive, I feel like. But what are we going to do? I'll play f5 instead. I want this knight gone. And don't like my light squares there being a potential source of irritation. Could go knight d6, which I would take and then follow up with bishop to e6. Not sure I've played this brilliantly, but I am still two pawns up and greedy as I am. 
that is probably good news. Knight c3, queen a5, planning to go bishop e6 whenever I get the chance. By the way, in case you're <clears throat> annoyed, I never look at you or the camera, forgive me. The screen is a little to my right, so I'll spend most of my time looking there, actually staring at the position. I'm not good enough at blindfold yet to completely ignore it, but we'll see <clears throat> how this works. Bitrick is taking his time. I'm ahead on the clock, which of course is always a big <clears throat> part of playing Blitz, of being good at Blitz. When I was a younger man, I used to be very fast, which was a big part of my Blitz strength. He's played Bishop h3, taking the f5 pawn. I thought about this earlier, intended to go e4, and I have not yet found a reason to change my mind. There you go, pick up two pawns in the opening and then somehow try to keep them while not getting mated. That's the best advice I got in this game, I have the feeling. Let's see if it works for me though. I'm always a little concerned with the king on g8, but two bishops and two extra pawns should be more than enough to... I think I'm much better here, frankly, but I have to be careful. Queen d2, intending to come to h6. There's always tricks in the position. Let's see how it goes. Let's check out the chat. Some guys are saying hello. I'm assuming there's some complaints about the technique. Yeah. <clears throat> now I think we're back. Hi, everybody. I won't have time to talk. <clears throat> now nah, I'll type something. <clears throat> <clears throat> Where's the fun if you can't troll your opponent while you're playing? Plays f3, which I think is a good move, just trying to open the position a little further. I will go along with his wishes, take on f3, and after e takes f, finally get in the move bishop e6, which I've been dreaming to play for a long time. <clears throat> now the plan is exchange stuff. Play rook a d8, occupy the open files. He probably won't go along with exchanging too many things, but if he goes rook e1, I'll go rook d3 and develop a bit of an initiative of my own. So far this game is going pretty well, as much as I hate to praise myself. Nah, we all know I love to praise myself, but I think I'm doing fine here. And his clock is also ticking down. We're playing without increment, so this will become a factor pretty soon. Rook d3, he plays rook e2, which is sensible. Rook d8, probably the other rook is gonna come to e1. And I will put this bishop on f6 just to get it out of the e-file where all his rooks are and put some pressure and hope for knight d1, which allows me to gain some more ground with the move rook to d2. This is looking up for me. <clears throat> Let's see whom we play next. The lag in the video is like 10 seconds from the chat. Sorry about that. Queen c1 has been played. I should not do my usual mistake of celebrating before I actually won the game. <clears throat> so how do we win it? I think greed is the answer. Greed is always the answer. Let's take more pawns. Queen takes a2, three pawns, knight f2, and <clears throat> push this guy. Since the rook on e2 is pinned, he can't take queen h6. He's launching last minute attack. I'm mainly playing on time, whom are we kidding, but I will try not to get checkmated in the last seconds. Bishop g7, queen to g5, and let's say rook to f8, <clears throat> just to keep a rook on the latest file, latest file, back rank, <laughs> can't even speak. g4, queen on g5 is scaring me, so I'll push it away with h6, queen h4, let's exchange here, bishop takes, and now it's time to start worrying about queening our pawn and winning on time, which worked. I won against Bitrick. Good game. Let's just keep it rolling and try to find the next game. Until recently, chess was like this. Chess 24 brought you this. Live interactive broadcasts from top tournaments with computer analysis and video commentary by the likes of Jan Gustafsson, Lawrence Trent and Peter Fiddler. A play zone where you can take on opponents from all around the world 24-7. Interactive beginners courses ensuring you pick up the basics fast while having fun. A tactics trainer to sharpen your chess by solving puzzles adapted to your level. 
hundreds of interactive videos, letting you watch and learn from star players such as Vichy Anand, Peter Svidler, Paco Vallejo, and Hu Yufan. You've given up on that outdated computer? That's why there are more reasons to use Chess24 on mobiles and tablets. Full play zone access, including pre-move. A tactics trainer so you can stay sharp wherever you are. Computer opponents you can challenge even when you're not online. Live broadcasts of top chess events. And the half? It's free! Well, that's half true. Most features are free, but limited for registered members. For a mere 99 euros per year, however, you can step up to premium membership and gain unlimited access to our video library. That and much more. See you at chess24.com.